Afghanistan, where recent attacks have dealt a setback to peace plans in the war-ravaged nation. The latest attack, a truck packed with explosives, blew up near a court in the eastern city of Gardez, killing at least five people. The Afghan Defense Ministry says 20 other people, including 15 civilians, were wounded in the attack. Taliban insurgents have claimed responsibility for the attack. The explosion comes two days after at least 56 people were killed in attacks in other locations across the country, with casualties including women and newborn babies. President Ashraf Ghani, who condemned the attacks, has ordered the military to switch to offensive mode rather than the defensive stance it had adopted as the United States withdraws troops and tries to take broker talks with its Taliban. And to discuss this new development in Afghanistan, joining me are two gentlemen. First, a security expert, Dr. Kash Anonuju from Abuja, and a global affairs analyst, Colin Suwinke, who joins me from Belgium. Good to have the both of you join us on the world now. Um, let me start with you, um, Colin Suwinke. Did you see this coming? I mean, there was a peace deal that was signed in February, and now we're seeing the Taliban claiming responsibility for the attack in Gardez. Did you see this, this coming? Anyone, thank you, uh, Princess, for having me. Anyone who didn't see this uh, happening is either blind or deaf. Uh, I say this because um, every one of us that has been following the uh, developments in uh, Afghanistan um, actually could see very clearly that the, um, uh, the peace, um, for want of a better word to call what uh, you know, was actually in place, was a very, very fragile uh, one. Uh, to some extent, it could be called um, a cosmetic uh, arrangement uh, because um, following the um, uh, stepping uh, of uh, the United States of America in uh, 2001, uh, where peace was, uh, was broken and, uh, well, not really peace, uh, the Afghans, uh, you know, sorry, the Taliban actually, um, you know, taking off power and uh, the semblance of uh, democracy restored, we knew that until the issues that brought uh, Taliban to power was fundamentally addressed, that these pockets of uh, violence would continue to uh, you know, rear their ugly uh, face. So it was not a matter of uh, if, it was more a matter of when uh, the uh, next devastation was going to take place. And the most despicable one, of course, was uh, the one that took place uh, in a hospital with uh, women, postnatal, and um, you know children in pediatric, where you know the heavy uh, casualty. So it's um, it's a worrying situation. Now, President Ashraf Ghani, which is the Afghanistan um, president, has directed the military to be on the f offensive and quote strike the enemy. What does this mean for the peace accord? What it means for the peace as accord is that uh, violence is going to uh, escalate, of course. Um, now, would anybody blame uh, Ashraf for wanting to take uh, that position? Uh, not necessarily, uh, but of course. Um, you do not ask um, a woman whose uh, child is being tortured uh, whether it is okay to relax torture wars uh, of course, um, the mother side of, uh, of the woman is going to say, no, get on with uh, the torturing as long as uh, the child is released. So that question, the question of uh, where do we go from here, should not be one that should be addressed by uh, Ashraf Ghani uh, alone. It is something that has to be addressed by the Committee of uh, Nations because, uh, you know, the president of uh, Afghanistan uh, is probably in his right to want to say, uh, please let the um, you know the, the violence. Let my uh, defense force uh, moving, not defensive, but more of uh, of offensive. But of course, it will only uh, make uh, matters worse. Ultimately, I believe that the worst that can happen under the situation is what um, um, the uh, late um, um, leader of um, uh, sorry, I've forgotten the name of the country. Uh, actually called it when he was invited in 1973 uh, to the United Nations to, uh, you know, give his uh, first uh, speech. He called it the, um, you know, imperative of holding the olive branch in one hand 
and holding the, uh, the gun on the other hand. At best, that is probably what uh, needs to happen here while the peace talks, uh, you know, uh, progresses. Is there even an opportunity for the peace talks, talks to progress? Because a lot of people believe that no side was ever committed to this agreement in the first place, and this could become just like a fig leaf of an excuse for everyone to get out. So is there even an opportunity for that peace talks to, to progress? Yeah, um, you are indeed right about the um, um, <coughs> sense of a fundamental framework on which peace uh, will be built. Um, also, indeed, the fact that uh, the lack of uh, commitment on both sides uh, have not helped uh, matters uh, even. Now, I do not know that the position of the United States can, um, you know, be safely be regarded as, uh, as being neutral. Uh, I believe that there are other institutions uh, to which uh, Afghanistan uh, belongs. Take, for example, the Organization of um, Islamic uh, Countries, the United Nations, and other international bodies. I believe that they should, at this point, be an assembly of all of these, um, you know, international uh, institutions that should begin to, uh, you know, broker peace between the two uh, sides, the government on one side and uh, the Taliban on the other side. All right, so l let me put you on hold, uh, Mr. Collins Uwenke, and go to Dr. Kash and Nonuju. So let's look at the security angle of this. Um, there were also other attacks um, uh, to, on Tuesday, uh, one of them in a maternity ward of a hospital, and which has been claimed by a section of the Islamic, Islamic State. Uh, is it that this is something that yes. should have been factor, factored in from the beginning, the fact that the Taliban cannot and do not control um, violence in Afghanistan? Oh, well, you need to understand what's going on. So far, the Taliban has a peace agreement with the United States. The Taliban does not have a peace agreement with the government of Afghanistan. So that's what you're seeing them playing out. Yes, there is an agreement for the U.S. to leave Afghan soil, but what about the agreement for the Taliban to now be brought into government? You cannot have an Afghan government that there is a peace meeting where the U.S. leaves Afghanistan. What about where the Taliban becomes part and parcel of the Afghan government? So that has not happened. So that's what we now need to do. That's why you see the Taliban saying that they do not recognize the Afghan government. And that's what they're doing. They're now ramping up. The second phase of this crisis, or rather you call it heat, to now force the Afghan government to sit down and talk to them. They have done the first stage of the talk, which is with the U.S. government. The second stage has to be between the Taliban and the Afghan government. If that is not done, you would not see any peace in Afghanistan. All right, so there was supposed to be, an, after the February um, a, a peace accord that was signed between the U.S. and the Taliban, there was supposed to be another peace accord uh, to be signed between the Afghan government and the Taliban in March, that, particularly March 7. But because of the coronavirus outbreak, that was put on hold. Um, the U.S. is still very much committed to, put in, to pulling its troops out of Afghanistan. Where does that leave the U.S. at this time? Well, what it simply means, the U.S. troops cannot leave Afghanistan if the Taliban and the Afghan government do not sit down to agree, as she rightly said, to come to agreement on the meetings that were put up. Until that is done, the Taliban trust the U.S., not the Afghan government. They're simply playing along, and they know that the Afghan government is a puppet, according to them, of the U.S. administration. So, for you now to have peace, they simply are reminding you, despite the coronavirus stories, we can still sit down and talk. A lot of bilateral agreements are still going around the world. So, I do not see a problem. If there is a political will to actually bring peace between the Taliban and the Afghan government, I think this is the time now for us to secure the movement on that. 
All right, Mr. Collins, Uweke, um, Dr. Cash and Nonu, you talked about the political will, and we know that there is a political side to this. The opposition in, in Afghanistan has also said, look, they're not going to recognize um, the, the presidency of Ashraf Ghani, um, saying that that election, was, uh, the election that brought him into office was flawed. Now, how do you see them using this opportunity of the co well, possible collapse of, of, uh, collapse of the peace agreement? Well, um, that's a rather sensitive area. The reason it's um, a sensitive area is that um, there is um, a specific uh, conspiracy theory going on now uh, that actually points to the fact that uh, the opposition party may have um, a bit of um, understanding, um, you know, with uh, you know leaders of the Taliban that. Um, you know, to some extent, they may actually, you know, be, uh, uh, you know, facilitating the devastation that is now uh, escalating. Now, uh, like um, Dr. Oranuju said, I think it is very, very important to see this from a very holistic, um, you know, perspective. What we appear to be seeing right now is a building whose foundation appears to be very, very weak. Now, how do you then come to this solid, uh, you know, foundation that we are talking about? It, it is indeed by, you know, bringing all the warring, uh, fac uh, you know, factions uh, together and identifying not the United States that, uh, you know, can be considered to a large extent uh, as one carrying a soiled hand, but indeed bringing in a neutral umpire to begin to, uh, you know, uh, monitor and moderate this whole exercise. And uh, that brings me back to the point that I made uh, earlier. There are other instructions, the United Nations, the uh, organization of, uh, you know, um, Islamic uh, countries that, um, you know, need, they, they, that can actually play that neutral uh, role in this specific uh, case. And I believe that uh, that is the political uh, solution that uh, should be considered now, but of course, um, continuing talks with all the political elements in the in the country, including the government of um, oh. you know, Ashraf Ghani, uh, remains uh, as important as right. bringing to other political players. Uh, you know, to get right. Mr. Collins Awake, I'm afraid we do have to leave it there. Collins Awake joining us from Belgium, and Dr. Kash Nanuju joining us from Abuja. Many thanks to the both of you for uh, giving us your perspective on this issue.